Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 11 of season 4 of The Walking Dead called Claimed. And overall this is another one of the moving pieces around the board episodes. We of course don't get to see Daryl or Beth <clears throat> this time around because uh, it looks like they're going to be the focus of the next episode. But um, let's just kind of get right into things. Uh, first of all, uh, well let's, let's start off on one side of the story and then just move on to the other. So let's start off with Rick, Michonne, and Car Michonne and Carl. Uh, I'm not really sure if there was supposed to be any kind of symbolism to the whole idea. Of, like in the very first shot, we see that street sign that says Crook. Uh, I'm not really sure if there was supposed to be any symbolism there. I guess maybe just sort of an ominous sign that, you know, bad people are a-coming, but, well, bad people are a-coming is sort of a, a kind of a given on The Walking Dead, and I'm a little confused as to why the zombies were freaking out over a balloon. Now, now I mean, they're, granted, they, we do know that they can be attracted by motion, but, uh, I don't know, it seems like it might take a little bit more than that to hold their interest. I mean, uh, those road flares they tried to use in Season 2 didn't do a very good job of that, and that they that seems to me the, uh, the sort of thing that would attract attention a whole lot more than a balloon. Now, I guess you could take that balloon as sort of a sign of the uh, less than disturbing loss of innocence sort of stuff that, they, that Michonne and Carl end up finding in that one house. Well, actually, I guess it was really more Michonne just there. Uh, like, for example... Uh, when she finds that painting of the girl that's all messed up. Well, if you're paying attention to the other paintings in the house, one other thing that you notice in there is a cute painting of some bunny rabbits. So let's see, we have cute bunnies and we have a messed up girl. Well, <laughs> gee, who, who, who does that remind you of? So... Maybe this is a little way of uh, reminding us, hey, Lizzie's still out there, and she's still a really, really messed up kid. But uh, anyway, the whole thing situation there was really just us getting back to the whole dynamic between Carl and Michonne. And they really do have a very nice, fun dynamic. Here we see Michonne opening up to Carl that in a way that she's never opened up to anybody, even her supposedly her best friend in the zombie apocalypse world, Andrea. Uh, but the less said about TV Andrea, the better, right? Oh, comic book Andrea, I love you so. Why, why did the TV show have to go and fail me on that part so badly? <sighs> anyway. Uh, and I definitely do like the Carl Michonne dynamic, because it's a light element. It's cheerfulness, it's happiness. It's just such an enormous contrast to what we have to deal with here. But of course, nothing can stay too happy very long on Walking Dead. And Michonne finding the body of those those little of those two little girls, I guess it was. Well, maybe I'm reading too much into what we've seen previously, but it always struck me that it's what well, it seemed to me that uh, maybe Michonne's boyfriend had mercy killed their son, and. Uh, well, anyway. <clears throat> so, basically, this is kind of us getting to see, you know, that Carl Michonne relationship reestablished. And I like how Michonne says to Carl, you know, what she had told him wasn't a secret. Like, but Carl says that he'll keep it to himself anyway. And, you know, you know this, is good. This, is, this is good for Carl. I mean, points to him for being the good guy there. Uh... And I'm not I'm okay with him using the word secret in that place because, well, you know, he's like what, twelve, thirteen years old? It would have been a little strange if he'd said, I'll keep your confidence in this you know, because that really would have been the better word to use in that situation. Or at least the more accurate word. But uh yeah, in real life I'm an English teacher, so uh being picky about that sort of things Thing is kind of my job, so do forgive if I might have harped on that perhaps unnecessarily. Uh, anyway, moving on over to Rick, and here we get to see um, basically <laughs> the adventures of how much does it suck to be Rick Grimes. 
Rick is one of those guys, he just seems like he can never really catch a break for long. And here, Rick just wants to take a friggin' nap. Uh, but, of course, that the good times can't last. But here we do demonstrate that Rick is, even when, you know, just the day before he was basically passed out, Rick is a guy who does not give up and is extremely resourceful. Honestly, with that whole stuff with him st under the bed, I kind of figured he was going to get his hands on a gun, possibly from the guy who got strangled unconscious, and end up having to like shoot the guy through the bed, which actually would have been pretty darn awesome, but uh, that didn't happen. And then after he kills the guy in the bathroom, well, it just becomes a question of... Uh, how long until the guy rises up and apparently not very long like I've said it seems that the amount of time it takes for a person to rise up seems to have taken a pretty huge plummet since the series started remember the doctor at the CDC even said that it can sometimes take up to I think he said something like the average was like about eight hours it took you know Andrea's sister basically the whole night until the next morning to turn if you remember that but anyway, uh, <laughs> now the random uh, the sur the survivors that uh, come into the house where Rick is staying, uh, they don't really strike me as being anybody who's particularly important to what I think is going to be the upcoming plot. I'm pretty sure they were just another random group of survivors. But what I like about this episode is that we get a lot of very subtle signs that these these are not good dudes before. That way, you know, so that we know that if, if it comes down to it, and Rick is just going to like basically go over there like he was at the at, towards the end of that particular scene, just whip around and kill this guy who's just sitting there eating a can of beans or something. Well, we have situations like where that one guy strangles another guy unconscious just so that he can sleep in a bed. And the guy that won that fight, when he walks up, I'm pretty sure it was him. No, no, it was the first guy. It was the first guy. Well, if you pay attention when he first walks up there and is looking around the room, you get a close look at his shoe. There's blood on it, and there's more than a little bit of it. Now, granted, that could just be from killing walkers, but still. Obviously, these are guys who are not unaccustomed to violence. And then when they find Michonne's shirt, one of the guys said, they say, like, oh, hey, a woman's been here. Well, one of the guys basically goes, oh, I call first dibs. So very much implying that these dudes were like hoping to, that this woman comes back so that they can rape her. Just like um, Dave and his chubby friend from Randall's group back in, uh, yeah, it was season two, I guess. So again, um, it's made, you know, we're not really beaten over the head with it, but if you're paying attention to what's going on, it's pretty clear that uh, Rick has very good reason not to uh, let these alert these guys to his presence, especially while he's unarmed. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let me see here. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's hop over and talk about what's going on with Abraham's group. Uh, first of all, um, one aspect where this episode did disappoint me was... Uh, excuse me delicious rooibos tea, very good stuff, is that we really get only a handful of lines out of Rosita. And I think it's Tara even kind of throws out some line about, like, that she's in love with Abraham, and that's why she's going along with all this, which, yeah, that, that, that right there just screams sloppy writing. I, I really do expect better from a show like The Walking Dead than that. Although Rosita was, of course, you know, Abraham's girlfriend in the comics, so... Mm, okay, but still, that's really... That's really just not good writing. Uh, so, I really think this episode kind of did Rosita as a character a little bit of a disservice there. Now, it was interesting to see sort of the dynamic between Tara and Abraham, and us getting a little bit of insight into who Abraham is. And I really do like the juxtapose of that conversation that they have towards the end, where Gabriel's going like, "Oh yeah, I can tell you're a good person," and and Tara kind of goes to him, "Well, just because you save the want to save the world, should, why should I? I should I, I should believe that you're a good person?" You know, th that's a that's a fair point. That is really a fair point. <clears throat> now let me see here. 
Um, you, yeah, it's not. It's kind of understandable that they would be very skeptical of this. I mean, Abraham seems to be very sincere, but what he's selling is pretty out there. It's like, oh, yeah, that dude over there with the mullet is a scientist, and if we can get him to Washington, D.C., we can save the world? Um, really? And then the whole thing with when, Eugene, when Glenn goes, well, okay, what happened? Glenn go, and Eugene goes, it's classified. Seriously, dude? does this? How in the world does this matter? And I, and I really can't believe Glenn didn't even try and press him on that, even the tiniest little bit. And if that's all Eugene's been saying, and that uh, Abraham has been going along with this, it makes Abraham and Rosita look like a bunch of dumbasses that they didn't say, you know what, there is probably no United States government left anymore, especially since, as they say, Eugene has not been able to contact anybody in Washington, D.C. for weeks and Glenn knows, okay, from when the CDC guy, that, you know, basically the CDC guy basically confirmed for him that the American government was went down the hole. Or at least, I mean, granted, he only really knew about the CDC, but, man, if there's anybody the government would be trying to get a hold of, you'd think it'd be the CDC guys. And they even, the scientists at the CDC even said, we were working on a cure. The French were the closest. But yeah. But yeah. Anyway. So, there are some, overall, there are some missteps this episode. But, overall, it's a good episode. And we do get to see Glenn... uh, Oh, sorry, Car- Carl, uh, John, and Rick now also heading towards the sanctuary, so we can finally start getting uh, slowly, slowly, slowly start getting pe- things in a position where people can start coming together again. <clears throat> so, overall, maybe not the strongest episode of the season, but still a pretty solid one. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you this time around. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi. Till next.